Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you, whether you're worshiping with us here or if you have joined us online. Reverend Mary Ann is away this weekend. Um, for those of you who do not know me, I am Christina Duncan, and I am a, an elder at the church, and I will be doing my very best to fill in for her today. I just want to draw your attention just to a couple of announcements that are in the bulletin, as well as one that didn't quite make it in. I would like to extend our love and sympathy to Linda and Lloyd Osmond on the death of Linda's mother, Nalina Margaret Peggy Jeffrey in Sarnia, on Saturday, October 12th, 2024. A funeral service will be held on Wednesday, November 6th at 1 p.m. at Emmanuel Presbyterian Church in Sarnia. Please remember to keep Linda, Lloyd, grandchildren, Lloyd Labio, Jeffrey, Justin, and Tony and Ashley, and all of the Jeffrey family in your prayers. Arrangements are entrusted to the McCormick Funeral Home in Sarnia. Now, as we all know, we just had a PA day on Friday, and Denise has shared with me that they had another great day. The children enjoyed a variety of crafts and activities, and they dropped off 23.6 kilograms of food donated on behalf of the fire department. They then made their way to the fire hall. The children got to go on the fire truck and learned a lot from Matt, the fire prevention officer, who gave them all a little gift. All of this was only possible because of the volunteers who spent the day doing crafts and activities with the children. Also behind the scenes, Reverend Mary Ann, Office Mary Ann, and Brian, and she's giving a big thank you to everyone who assisted and I got to see some pictures that were posted on the church's Facebook page so if you haven't seen them there's some wonderful pictures of the children there don't think there was anything else Marianne um, just one other yes next Sunday is loaves and fishes and I believe we've got the time falling back next Sunday so remember to set your clock back an hour. You get an extra little bit of sleep next Sunday. You don't want to show up too early or somebody might put you to work. Oh, yes, the choir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody can warm up and sing with the choir. That would be wonderful. Okay, so the challenge, the next challenge is going to be printed for November 24th. If you would like to add a recipe or story about your summer, what you want to do in the winter, anything of interest to the congregation, please have it in to Office Marianne by November 10th. And I think I've got everything. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, yes. Thought I was going to get away with that. So in the upcoming week, there's only one birthday to announce, and that would be mine. <laughs> it is on October 30th, so like I like to say, I was almost a spook. No comments, please. And on that note, I would ask you to please turn to your order of service and join me reading the call to worship responsively. Praise the Lord in every time and place. We will tell of God's goodness each day. Boast only in the Lord. We will praise God's wonderful deeds. Spread the news of God's greatness. We will give God glory everywhere we go. So let us worship God together, here, now, and always. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 482, Christ has made the sure foundation.
Lord God, loving God, we gather as your servants, shaped by faithfulness of those who went before us and taught us the name of Jesus. In Christ, you call us together to praise your name and serve your world in his name. With the kindness of your spirit, feed roots, the roots of your faith and renew our vision for the church in this generation. Fill us with courage and confidence to reach out to others with your mercy and grace. For you are our God, ever faithful to your people. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord of love and mercy, you are the source of every good and perfect gift, but we confess our gifts to you are less than perfect. We honor you when it fits into our schedules. We forget that your love should set our priorities and pursue our own desires. Forgive our lack of faith. Forgive our wavering hearts and reawaken our commitment to you, today and always. Amen. Friends, we are promised that those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Claim your hope in this good news. God's perfect love abides in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God for such great mercy. The children can come forward, please. <clears throat> Just want to sit with me. Hopefully I can get up. How are you guys all doing today? Good? Good? Awesome. Today is Reformation Sunday. 
Now, reformation is the act of reforming or changing something to be better. Today, we recognize Martin Luther, the man who started the Protestant Reformation in in 1517, and what he did still influences us today. We also recognize the people in our day-to-day lives. Some we may know, and others we have never met. People who have said or done or written something which has had a positive influence and impact on our faith journey. Take a minute to think about someone who has helped you understand the things at church. Any ideas? It can be something like doing an activity with Denise that taught you something about the Bible, a Bible story that made you want to read another story. Or maybe a bedtime story that somebody read to you. Or something Reverend Mary Ann talked about in one of her children's messages that made you think. It could be something that you read on your own in a story or something you saw on the news that made you want to learn more about the church and your history. Now, I started to come regularly to church when I was a little bit older than Lily. And through Sunday school and the youth group, I learned more about what God meant to me. And I learned more still when I became a member of the choir. The anthems and the hymns that we sing help to express things in a different way. Because things don't always have to be in the spoken word. It can happen by music as well. And that way, you're not listening to somebody to talk and talk and talk, and you get to hear the message in a different way. No matter what it is, share your experience, your memories with someone else. That will help people you know learn and understand. It will help you remember the past, and it will help you make more memories with the people you have around you right now. Can we pray together? Dear God, God, help us to remember remember those who were brave enough enough to stand up for change change. and for those who still stand up for us us. so we can continue to gather gather. and worship together. together. Amen. All right, you guys go down with Janice. Our next hymn is hymn number 500, Open My Eyes That I May See.
Please be seated. I now invite Lily to come up to do our scripture reading today. Let us pray. O oh God, as we hear your word read and interpreted today, touch us with its grace and power so that we may grow wiser as we listen and serve you more willing as we live. Amen. We will now read Psalm 200, 126 responsibly. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our, our mouth was filled, filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying the sheaves. Our scripture is Mark 10th chapter, Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging, when he heard that it was the Jesus son of Nazareth. Then he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to the feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the, along the road. For the word of God of scripture, and the, for the word of God within us, and for the word of God around us. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. I ask that we yield our hearts to your message coming through me today. As I mentioned to the children this morning, today is Reformation Sunday, and we honor Martin Luther and the risk he took when he posted his 95 theses on the castle church doors in Wittenberg, Germany, on October 31st, 1517. This was the origin of the Protestant Reformation. He challenged the church's authority, its doctrine, and he reclaimed the central doctrine of salvation justification by faith alone. Unlike the Catholic Church, which believed in part that if a person paid money to the church, then the church would forgive that person's sins, we reformed and split from the Roman Catholic Church due to this and other differences in doctrine. Now, this is a very simplistic view of Reformation and what happened a little over 500 years ago, which has shaped our church as we know it today. Without Reformation, we could still be living under a religious regime that uses fear of death and judgment to keep us in line rather than having access to gospel messages that we were taught that salvation by God's grace and by faith in Jesus Christ. We should not think about Reformation only once a year. People did not suffer for us to only think about this once a year. We should honor them every Sunday because of our deep faith and conviction of the fundamental truths revealed in God's word that shapes our theology and how we worship and how we live today and every day. This morning, Lily read for us the story of the healing of the blind Bartimaeus. This demonstrates how persistent Bartimaeus was to get Jesus' attention by shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Others around him tried to shush him, quiet him down, but he got louder and more persistent. Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. Until Jesus finally asked what he could do for the blind man. My teacher, let me see again. The reply, go, your faith has made you well. His sight was restored, and he followed Jesus. Throughout the Gospels, we hear how Jesus healed the lame, the crippled, the blind, and the mute, showing his compassion for them. He healed to honor their faith by working miracles of healing the body, mind, and the spirit. I have said in the past that the Bible is still as relevant today as it was in the past. And we need to take time to retain and contemplate what we hear on Sunday. All the lessons we have learned in today's text give us a clear message on how to be persistent, how to be heard, and the rewards that we will receive when we keep our faith and follow Jesus. Another part of Reformation Sunday is that we take time to remember and retell the stories of our faith, stories that have been handed down from those who came before us, friends and family, and even those that we've only read about, the ones who risked everything so that we would be able to be here today worshiping as we do. We have a rich heritage here, that has been passed down to us for more than 200 years in this congregation. It is all around us. Every time we come into this building, we think of the past. We think of the people, the lessons that we have learned here. Let us continue to learn and pass down this rich heritage so that the generations to come can learn and grow their faith as we have. Without everyone here now, reaching out to others, sharing with others, we risk losing our heritage. I would like everyone to take a minute to remember those who are no longer here with us and think how they influenced you.
thinking back to who influenced you, who encouraged you when you were in Sunday school, who encouraged you to then go ahead and teach Sunday school, or play piano at the church concert, who welcomed you to join Craft and Chat, or who welcomed you with a smile as you walked into the church. Did someone tell you had a nice voice and you should join the choir? As I stand here now, I see and hear people from my past who influenced me in many ways. I will not mention any names because I'd be afraid that I might miss somebody very important. Most of you know them, and I'm sure that they have influenced you as well. I am a member of this congregation today because of the people in my past and how welcoming they were to me when I was younger. I still hear, how are you, chief, when I walk into the church hall? There is a reason I'm an elder. I was encouraged by someone to put my name in to become an elder because she thought I would be a good fit to be an elder and a member of session. I'm a member of the choir because I was encouraged to sing and be a part of a group. I love playing music, so I'm a member of the flute ensemble. I want to take part in my present. I stood up here for the first time to deliver the message I think it must be about seven years ago. Now this happened partly because I have a big mouth and I don't know when to keep it shut. But I continue to stand up in front of people regularly because I enjoy doing it. And some like to hear what I have to say. I've learned a lot about myself, the scriptures when I do this, and after a service, if I'm lucky, a few might even share their memories with me once the service is over. We do not need to be rich or powerful, nor do we need to stand in front of a group of people and speak to have the ability to influence others. Our actions are being observed every day by those around us, our children, grandchildren, co-workers, and everyone we come in contact with every day. You don't know what little thing you might say or do that would make a difference in somebody's life for the better. We are encouraged to use our influence for good, not evil. We need to ensure our actions are honest. You must be willing to humble yourself, practice what you preach, and treat others as you would want to be treated. I remember hearing those phrases as I was growing up, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that heard those regularly. And they have served me very well. Those statements are easy to remember and go a long way to help you to grow and show others how to be more like Christ in character, to live with morality and rules of behavior that honor our past. I do not remember each passage of scripture I read, and not every passage inspires me. There is one pas passage that we all know that joins us together. It is one part of the Sermon on the Mound, and we say it together every Sunday. It teaches us to pray for the things we need, teaches us to pray for God's ways above our own, and Jesus teaches us to praise God in prayer. The Lord's Prayer is an extract of the Sermon on the Mount, and we recite it from memory every Sunday. It helps us to stay close to God and each other. It is a constant reminder of how we should live our life. We know we can be weak and disobedient. Every Sunday, out loud, and together we recite the Lord's Prayer 
and in part we say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We all have this memorized. We do not need to see the words to recite it together as we say it together with our children, grandchildren, old friends, and new friends alike. We are keeping old memories alive and making new ones. How will you keep your memories alive for the generations to come? Let us remember and honor yesterday by telling stories today to create memories for tomorrow. Amen. As we hear your word read and interpreted today, touch us with its healing power so that we are able to follow your Son and Savior. Amen. The scriptures speak of God's mercy, reversing the suffering of those who turn to God. As we give our gifts to God, let us be thankful for the strength God gives us to face our challenges and trust that we can help each other to face theirs when we reach out in Jesus' name. There are many ways to give to the church. We've got a plate at the back of the church. We have e-transfer, pre-authorized remittance. Every little bit helps the church. And gracious God, we bring our offering in gratitude for all that makes our lives good, even in uncertain times. Bless these gifts with your spirit and use them through the ministry and mission of our church to touch lives in need of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I'm going to break this yet. Our next hymn is hymn number... 678, I greet thee who are my redeemer art.
please be seated. Please join me in your order of service for the responsive reading of the prayers of the people. Just and merciful God, we turn to you in hope and gratitude. When the world around us seems troubling, we are grateful for your steadfast love. Thank you for your spirit at work in all times and places, calling out the best in your people, showing us when we must repent, opening paths to reconciliation when we have offended with the proclamation of your prophets and the compassion of Jesus in mind. May we seek your justice and know your mercy day by day. God of justice and truth, hear our prayer. We pray for justice for the earth. Protect those creatures and communities at risk from the effects of dramatic disasters and incremental changes in the climate. Open our eyes to see how we can live more responsibly responsibly and change our hearts to know we must. God of justice and truth, hear our prayer. We pray for justice among the nations. Create more generation sharing of resources between countries with good harvests and those depleted by famine. Where resources are extracted for export, protect brave advocates for fair wages and for environmental protection. And where there is aggression, aggression and intimidation between na nations, rise up the willingness to make peace and settle differences fairly. Praying for those who are living in constant fear due to ongoing conflict, and pray for the day the conflict ends and there is peace. God of justice and truth, hear our prayer. We pray for justice in our court systems. Guide those who judge, prosecute, or defend to serve with integrity that those who are accused may receive fair trials and that those who have been wronged are restored to fullness of life. Grant those who are convicted humane treatment so that your spirit may lead them to rehabilitated potential. God of justice and truth, hear our prayer. We pray for justice in the workplace. May those who work for others be treated with dignity and earn a fair wage. May all those who create that work e e earn a fair return. Create equity and respect between those different backgrounds and identities and guide young people to opportunities to develop their gift, God of justice and truth. Hear our prayer. God, we all need some kinds of healing in our lives. We remember before you those struggling with illness of body, mind, or spirit, those waiting for a diagnosis or treatment, and all those whose health challenges are invisible to others, God of justice and truth. Hear our prayer. On this Reformation Sunday, prompt us to remember those who came before us and help us to remember the lessons we were taught, how we are enriched with the memory of them Help us continue to remember and share those memories with future generations. Help us to have a positive impact on the world as Christ intended us to and use our gifts to enable our neighbor, neighbors to thrive and flourish in the world you love. God of justice and truth, hear our prayer. Your spirit prays within us, O God, even when we cannot find the right words. So hear us this day and answer in ways that encourage our faith and change the world for the good, for the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our closing hymn is hymn number 497, Word of God Across the Ages. Bless the Lord continually. Look to God and be radiant, and let God's praises flow through your lives. May we remember the past with a smile as we continue to make memories with those who are with us here now. And may they smile in the future when they think of us. And may the God who made you, the Christ who mends you, and the Spirit who brings you life bless and keep you now and always. Amen. Please be seated to enjoy the postlude. 